Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. Adobe Illustrator is a vector-based program in which you can create high-quality visual representations. In this channel, we use Adobe Illustrator to create vector-based architectural visualizations, such as colorful urban scenes and axonometric diagrams. It is also an amazing tool to represent your technical drawings in different visual styles. Illustrator is a great program to use textures and renders along with line drawings. It allows you to create visuals in any style you want, in high resolution. So in this video, we are going to cover how to set up your workspace for architectural drawings, how to use specific tools and commands, and most useful features that'll help you to make architectural representations. Let's start with creating a new file. Print presets are listed at the top. You can select a preset from there or enter the measurements of the artboard manually. You can choose the unit you want to work in, decide the orientation of the artboard and select the color mode. You can also adjust all of these settings later on while working inside the file. Once you've opened your workspace, you can name and save your file. Program allows you to save as different versions. FYI, Illustrator CC is compatible with earlier versions. Our tip number one is how to set up your workspace, which is your panels, bars, and windows. Workspace button is located at top right. You can select from several preset workspaces or create a custom one that fits your working style. For architectural illustrations, we found the Essentials Classic version is the most practical. All essential tools and panels you'll need are at your fingertips. To customize the artboard, you use the Edit Artboards button in Properties panel. From there you can add, remove or resize artboards. We'll go with 80 by 80. To use guidelines, you'll need to add rulers to your workspace. Go to View, and select Rulers, Show Rulers. You can drag and place as many horizontal and vertical guidelines as you want. One quick tip is changing the colors of the guidelines. To do that, go to Preferences, Select Guides and Grid. You can choose the color you want from here, so it doesn't clash with your drawing or background color. To erase guides, just select them and press delete. For this tutorial, we'll use our axonometric building blocks as a base. You can use any line drawing, floor plans, sections, or 2D exports of 3D models. We'll select all. Copy the selection. And paste in place to our original file. You can scale the selection towards its center by dragging the bounding box while pressing Option and Shift keys. Our next tip is how to use layers to organize your file and speed up your workflow. Let's start by renaming the first layer. Double click to rename it. Then, we'll add a new layer underneath by clicking the Create a New Layer button. This will be the background layer. To select a fill color for the background, first, select none for the stroke box, then double-click the fill box to choose a color. To draw the background, select the rectangle tool, then click and drag the rectangle to fit the artboard. While the background is selected, you can enter specific dimensions from the properties panel. We are making it the same size as the artboard, 80 by 80. In the layers panel, you can lock and change the visibility of the layers. You can select all items in a layer by clicking the circles on the right end. You can move the selected items to another layer by dragging the circle to other layers. You can prepare your drawings much faster just by using the layers panel efficiently. Let's keep the background layer locked and return to our drawing. To make the outlines of the buildings thicker, select all and change the stroke weight. Our next tip is how to quickly select and transform the elements of your drawing by advanced selection. For easy editing, our buildings are grouped. If you double-click, you'll enter to isolation mode where you can only edit the grouped object. If you select a part that you want to change, for instance fill color, go to select, click same. Here you can select all the parts that share the same features at once. We'll choose fill and stroke, and it'll select all the parts in the same color, then we can change it to white. We'll repeat the same steps of selecting the one part we want to change, then advance select all the parts in the same color, and change it to white. It's much faster than doing it one by one.
Once you finish, you can exit the isolation mode by double-clicking the back arrow at the top left. You can make different advanced selections according to the features that elements share. For example, to select all the elements share same opacity value, select one of them. Go to Select, Same, Appearance, then you can change the properties of all of them at once. You can use eyedropper tool to apply properties of one vector to others. If you're also get irritated with the parts that coming out of your artboard, applying a clipping mask is a good option. To do that, copy and paste and place the background on top of your artboard. Then select all and click make clipping mask. But isolating the clipping mask and editing it can be a hassle. Our next tip can do the same without affecting your workflow. You'll need two rectangles to make a frame. Copy the rectangle and paste in place. Scale it by holding the shift key until it covers the outer parts. Select both rectangles then select the shape builder tool from the toolbar. Press the option key and click on it to delete the inner rectangle. Your frame is ready. Make it the same color as your workspace with eyedropper tool. Create a new layer and place it at the top. Lock the layer and you are good to go. You won't even remember it's there, but your frame is there. Our tip 5 is very quick, yet one of the tools you'll use the most. To change the positions of objects on the same layer, you'll use the Arrange tool. Select the object you want to reposition, right-click to Artboard, go to Arrange, and then choose the option that fits. The Pencil tool is one of most useful tools that is often ignored in architectural illustrations. You just need to know how to use to its full potential. It's great for drawing free hand lines, such as this shoreline. To copy it quickly, select the line and drag it while holding the Option key. To repeat the same action, simply press the Command and D. You can edit the lines so easily using the Pencil tool. You can reshape the existing path by drawing over it, until you are happy with it. With Direct Selection tool, you can edit anchor points, pull the handles, and use Delete and Add Anchor Point tools to transform it further. If you double-click the Pencil Tool icon in the Tools panel, you can view the options for the Pencil Tool. Here you can adjust the smoothness of the lines. You can also use the Pencil Tool to draw straight lines by holding the Option key in Mac and Alt key in Windows. You can do a lot of things with the Pen Tool too. In this drawing we'll just show you how to draw a dashed line. Draw a diagonal line to one of the roads. To exit Pen Tool, just press Escape. Use eyedropper tool to copy style from the other lines. To make it look like a road line, go to strokes panel and select dash line. Enter the dash and gap values to match the scale. Our next tip is how to adjust opacity, but to use it in a creative way. First select the shorelines we've drawn and move them to background layer. Select all and click the in-between spaces while the Shape Builder tool is selected. It'll divide them into separate shapes. Make the colors the same as the background, then you can adjust the opacity value of each. Select one of the shapes and lower its opacity. Then make the opacity of each lower than the previous one. That brings us to our next tip. You can add images to your drawing, especially textures that go well with the composition. We'll place the texture underneath our shorelines. It'll give an effect of a deepening body of water. While the image is selected, you'll see the image option at the top. From there, you can transform your image. We'll just crop it to fit the artboard. It'll automatically embed the image since we've cropped it. Let's draw a park in the corner for our next tip. 
Then we can start making our own grass pattern. We'll just draw some grass shapes quickly. You can always edit them later. Once you've drawn several, select and move them. Go to Object, Pattern, Make. Here you can see the preview of your pattern tile. You can draw new grass shapes and move the existing ones to make your pattern more seamless. You can also adjust every property of the pattern you've drawn. You can change its strokes and colors. After you've finished with the adjustments, you can rename it and click to done. Turn your line into a closed shape to apply a pattern fill. Your custom pattern is in the swatches panel, you can select it from there. You can also change any object's color from the edit, edit colors, recolor artwork. Just select the color you wanted to change, and select the new color you want them to be. You can also change the scale of the patterns, just double click to scale tool. From there, uncheck the transform objects box and check the transform patterns. Type what percentage you want it to scale. Use preview button to see the effect applied. You can also make custom brushes in Illustrator. This time we'll use these pre-made trees, but you can easily draw your custom ones using tips we've mentioned earlier. We'll copy the trees and paste them outside the grouped object. Then go to Brushes Panel, click New Brush, and from there we'll select Scatter Brush. Here, there are many options that you can manipulate. You can experiment with them, change the size and spacing to randomize the brush. Since we'll apply it to a very small area, we didn't adjust them that much. After you've done, click OK. To apply the brush, select the Paint Brush tool from Toolbar, then choose your custom brush from the Brushes panel. It's that easy. This tip would save you a lot of time, especially filling in large areas such as master plans. Our next tip is coloring. With the advanced selection tool, it is very easy to select the objects of different colors, but it takes a little longer if everything is the same color as in this drawing. For this one, we'll select the surfaces with the direct selection tool and then apply the color we want with the eyedropper tool. Prepare yourself a color palette, it should be at hand while you color. We'll repeat the same action for each surface. Select the surface, then select the color. Using keyboard shortcuts for this can save you a lot of time. Press A for direct selection, and then press I for eyedropper. Press A, click, and press I. You can select multiple surfaces and color them at once as well. It feels somehow therapeutic coloring in Illustrator. We're almost at the end. We'll add an overlay pattern to the background. We've chosen a pattern from our previous drawings, copied it to our artboard, and changed its color with the recolor artwork command. Once we have applied the pattern to the background, we can share our next tip for this video. Blend Modes is a great feature that is also available in Photoshop. On this channel, we've used this feature in all our videos that we've added overlay textures. Select the pattern, then double-click to Opacity. Here you'll see different blend modes. Since it is a monochrome drawing, the modes doesn't show up that much. You can see the effect of different blend modes much better in colored drawings. We'll choose Difference, and that finalizes our drawing. Our last tip in this video is how to export. Go to File, Export, Export As. From there, select the file type you want to export as. We'll go with the JPEG. Don't forget to select Use Artboards. In JPEG options you can adjust the resolution and quality preferences. Click OK and it'll export. After it's done, you can view your JPEG file. And that's it for this video. 
We hope you found it useful. Is there any other tips you want to recommend? Please let us know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Until next time.